So when I got back to Memphis, man, they put me in bad lock then, man. So so money bag, see, they just called you out out the blue, or did you already have some type of like relationship with them? I feel like man, like man, you gotta stand your ground with these labels, man. Man, if you ain't no take Keith, no Metro booming, man, they gonna look at you. Oh, what, man? What, we finna play? Yo, what's up with y'all? It's your boy TV Digital. Welcome to another episode of Straight Sauce. Today, I'm gonna be chopping it up with my bro, Turn Me Up YC. If you do not know who that is, he's a producer signed to Moneybag, yo. He made a couple big songs in the last year. He produced Said Son by Moneybag. I Got Time Today by Moneybag. The famous song that we can't get away from, Back in Blood by Lil Durk and Pooh Shiesty. And he produced eight singles off of Moneybag, new album, Gangsta Pain. So today, I'm gonna be chopping up with my bro about how he got signed to Moneybag, how he came up from Tennessee, and then on top of that, me and Termi YC is gonna make two beats from scratch. We're gonna make a Memphis beat and an emotional beat. So with that being said, go grab some snacks, sit back, relax, and enjoy the interview. Let's get into it. Also, the two beats that me and YC cook up today, we decided to give you the two FLPs for free with the sounds and everything in it. Hit the link in the description, go get that. Oh, you know what I'm saying? This is Straight Sauce. We episode six. We got Turn Me Up YC in the building. You know what I'm saying? What's up, gang? What's good? This the dude that made the famous guitar wife. Wicked around. That shit. Well, he made that shit popping. <laughs> So, I mean, you score big. Like, every year, you have a record, and this shit just get bigger and bigger all the way from D. Moolah to Back in Blood now. Like, you been going crazy, bro. I feel like your time, 2020, done been a good year for you. Yo, Cat, this shit crazy, bro. Like, man, I wasn't expecting none of this shit, man. Like, like real shit, I wasn't expecting none of this shit. Like, I wasn't expecting, man, to be, like, number one producer for five weeks straight. I wasn't expecting none of it. Man, it's all, like, amazing to me, like, how everybody else is looking at it. It's amazing to me like that. So man, this shit just crazy how this shit just doing from the Moolah days. Like when working with the Moolah in the kitchen to working with bag at the crib. It's like this shit just working now, fool. Let's start from the top. Like how you got into production. I started when I first got out of high school, man. Like high school, man, I was like, man, with my boy Real Red. He was um coming up, he did time today with me. For money bag, yo. But uh we was just like one summer, bro. We was man chilling at the crib, man, on a two hundred dollar computer, bro. It was like, hey, bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do with life. But I've been playing drums since I was four and I was playing piano since I was thirteen. Man, it was just like, all right, let me just see what this computer can do. Like, let me see how I can just bring everything together, cop. A nigga like me, I'm so used to church, bro. So I was used to church music. So man, I had um like I said, one summer we still we was just like playing with it, like man, I don't know them it feel like the older the older it feels like the elevens and tens, man. man. I'm looking at this shit crazy. I'm like, what the fuck is this, bud? <laughs> man, like one month, like when we got back my senior year, when I got back to school in high school. He was on, he went to another school. He went to like a little academy, private school, play ball. And so, man, we came back the summer that we graduated. We came back and man, I'm like, damn, how the fuck you get that cold, bro? And he sat down and took time and shit, took time and what he did. And I'm like, I right, bet, man, I need to go on, you know what I'm saying? And we gonna tighten up and get right, man. Let me try this shit and work with it, bro. Like, man, how? If I'm, when I'm thinking about it right now, that shit, like, damn, a nigga that came along with this big shit, man. Oh, you from uh, you Memphis or like outside of Memphis? I'm outside of Memphis, man. I call it Fed County. I got it tatted on me, man. So, like, as far as like for producers who's outside, like, they don't really have like a big city to work. And you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. Like, how did you get connected? Like, once your beat started getting good, where did you start, like, building relationships with artists? Uh, man, I used to DJ before anything. Um, like, I was DJing, I had to DJ at 420, man. I'll never forget this shit, 420, bro. I was just in the rig, like, two weeks before then. So I was in the rig, man, and my car fucked up, all of that shit. So, man, I had went to the, had DJ and shit. So, like, I seen the moolah, and I was like, Damn, should I push up on like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas be thinking like, man, should I pull up, push up on him? His nigga gonna get on me, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't want nothing like that. So like two days later, man, I just sit up in my room and just, man, I'm like, let me cook up a Demula type beat. It's when I was just thinking, I went thinking hard about the beat, but I knew what it sound like. So shit, I had, um, man, reached out, like tagged them, like I post a, a beat, man. I'm like, who y'all hear that on? And I posted it and I tagged them in. I'm like, Demula. And Demula had come in. I thought it was going to be like one of them 
celebrities don't be seeing this shit, but man, no cap, niggas be looking, bro. So like, he, he texted me like, I need you, bro. And so she, <laughs> after that day, Mula, man, called me when I was in the movies, bro. It's crazy, fun ass story. The man called me when I was in the movies, bro. And I was watching, I don't know what the fuck I was watching. And he called me, he was like, hey, bro, I'm fucking with you, bro. We stayed on the phone to the movie, the whole movie ended, bro. I ain't watched the movie. And he was like, man, it's locked in. It's locked in. So we locked in, man, down there, four tapes straight. I feel like, man, you know, when niggas, when I went in the game, niggas were telling me, like, man, lock in with that one one artist. Lock in with that one artist. So, which it did work for me, because locking in with one artist, bro, can lead up to other things, like how I got with Bag, how I got with Poo, how I got with a lot of niggas, man. So, well, like, do, do my life, was he, like, your first big placement? Yup, crank up. Like, we did, it was, um, like, the remix really just took off, though. Crank up with Stoner for Vegas and Money Bag Go. And around that time, it was my first time just working with Bag. Also, like, man, the label that I'm with, I'm with um, Ennis Entertainment and Money Bag Go, Bread Guy, Ennis, Slag Ennis. So, man, they had flew me up. This is my first trip ever, man. One o'clock in the morning, man. The CEO in his head, he called me, was like, hey, young nigga, you want to go to New York, bro? First trip ever, bro. So she flew me out to New York, bro. And uh, this is when I met Bad, bro. I had like a $500 computer, bro. Shit crazy. Like I said, this shit froze up. I, I got bro, I, flopped, <laughs> I flopped the first day, bro. So this shit was like, damn, fool. Like, I get, like you can feel the attention, like, yeah, this young nigga ain't finna do shit, man. So, man, I got back to Memphis, man. They put me in bad lock then, man. So, so money bag, see, they just called you out, out the blue, or did you already had some type of, like, relationship with them? I had no relationship with bad. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, every club, like, we go to the club, or go, man, pull up his studio, he'll speak to a nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, like, relationship, right? We, man, like, I just, the young nigga that signed with me, type shit. So how did they like, hear you? Like, how did they know the contact? The Moolah. Okay, so it was through, okay. Yeah, sure. yeah, we got signed to Sun Label. So as far as like the backtrack a little bit for producers, like, you know, like some of these folk, like 14, 15, so like, if I'm working yeah, with an yeah. artist, like a big artist in the city or some shit, how would you like, cause I can see a 14 being like, okay, we gonna grow together, but I need you to pay me for every session, every hour, every beat. <laughs> how did you work the business with D Moolah? Like, what's the real, like, is it every session you was like, okay, you got to pay me for this to pull up and this? I'm going put it like this. I'm gonna put it like this. I just kind of like, man, I'm, I, I'm in so in love with music, bro. Like, man, I want to stay in the cash. I said, the cash don't come, bro. Yeah. I was putting up for free, bro. Like, you know, they throw me gas money on the side, bro, because I stay far. I stay farther from them. So they throw me gas money on the side, bro. But, man, getting big checks, like checks, man. Man, nah, they, this shit gonna come. Like I, like I said, I be telling folks in my other interviews, like, man, it's levels to this shit, man. Like, you gotta hit, man, you gotta hit a thousand before you can hit ten. Gotta hit two thousand before you hit fifteen, bro. It's like, man, it's just levels to this shit, man. So, man, when niggas go through that, bro, it, I know, I know how young niggas feel, man. Like, damn, bro, I ain't getting paid for this shit, man. Like, why they do tell them right now, young niggas just be patient, bro. This shit gonna come, man. And I'm, I'm most like believing in God, fool. So that nigga, that man got my back all the times. What was your first money bag place? Uh, time served, uh, man. I had like three, three of them boys on there. I had like, man, we did speak for them, pop my shit and protect the brand with the baby. So as far as like albums and placements, for a producer who really don't, you know what I'm saying, this might be their first placement, don't know how it works. Break down basically how does the business end? Cause people in the community, when you get a place, it's like the most scariest thing, but it's really not though. Like, I feel like, man, like, man, you gotta stand your ground with these labels, man. Man, if you ain't no Take Keith, no Metro booming, man, they gonna look at you. Uh, what, man, what, we finna pay you this, bro. We finna pay you that. Nah, if you doing something in the game, you got plaques, you did it all, bro. Stand your ground on this shit, man. Ain't, only thing I gotta do is respect it, bro. But like, if you up and coming, man, stay for instant, man. I just up, uh, man. They say, only thing we got for you is fifteen hundred. I'll take that fifteen hundred and keep building relationship. This is how you build relationship. Go back to like building relationship with artists, like. 
a lot of times I see producers and I see artists at a time like bro when you in the studio with these folks just be yourself like don't act no type of way you know what I'm saying don't act like uh, like a groupie in the studio like just give us some proper like studio etiquette tips yeah man my thing bro like I know you probably be, man, you know what I'm saying like in the back like I was bro when I first met bad bro I was scared like I wasn't scared bro I was nervous and shit bro cause I'm like first of all your chain shining bright as hell on me man like I'm looking at you, bro, like, my God, damn, man. It, this already intimidating me, bro. Like, this a rich-ass nigga, man. But once you just sitting there, man, you locked in, bro, all this is going to be your, you going to be yourself regardless, bro. Like, it ain't nothing going to hold you, bro. So, man, when my two bills, bro, just go in there, be yourself, bro. Like, it might feel, man, you might feel like the shit going to be looking at you. Like, the nigga going to be looking like. What the young nigga got? What he got? He got heat or some shit? Let me hear that shit. Bro, to be yourself, bro. Everything gonna fall into place. No cap. All right, so I got this melody. You know what I'm saying? I try to go for the Memphis sound, but I ain't from Memphis, man. Y'all be doing it up. So, all right, so let's go ahead and break down how I made this melody real quick. So first, I started off with this one shot. It was a KBZ bell called Native. And what I put on the one shot is just a little EQ. I took out the highs and the lows just to give it a vintage feel. I used this plugin called Good Hertz Mega Verb and I used the preset default C just to give a little bit of reverb. And then what I did is I made an automation clip and I just wanted to put halftime on the first eight bars. So this is what we have so far. So second one I wanted to add was just a little texture. So I added another one shot from KBZ kit called a percussion vibe. And then what I did for the second eight bars of the melody is I put an automation clip on here and the effect that I put on here is the Fetric. I use this preset called backward vocals. This is some shouts I used to use a lot and I just put it on there just to switch it up. So this is what we got. And then last I added this other KBZ shot called melodic vibe. And what I put on here was EQ. I boosted the highs, took out the lows, added good hurt mega verb. Then I added a delay called Primal Tap. I used a preset called Space Station. Then I added Micro Shift, and this just helped spread it out throughout the mix. If you're looking for a one shot kit to cop, you could cop the Poison One Shot Kit off of Producer Grind. It's a free one shot kit and it comes with some dope sounds. So just make sure y'all go check that out. I gotta ask everybody who hopped on here, man. What do you put on your master channel? Shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but shit. Like, I, I go back, like, go back to it. I'll show you what I do. I go to the three little knobs right there, turn the high up on that bitch, like a little bit. Like, go back down a little bit and then I, yep, soften it, bitch, and this it. <laughs> okay, it's different when you post a beats on youtube as a producer bro rappers just care if the drums not no cow bro like like man i was just in the studio with the artist man like he said man turn the bass all the way up like i'm like damn bro i ain't touch my 808 bro because i like like i use my own 808 that's how niggas like this shit now i just be like all right bitch now as far as the memphis drum is, is it more about leaving it simple or more being complex how you really move around with it? i don't lie i keep everything simple fool just because i like to get an artist they, they you know what i'm saying a little breathing space and shit man i like to do that shit but nah like if i gotta go complex i do that but he's going straight memphis bro that, the 808 just gotta knock this it When does a producer know like the beat doing too much where the artist can't flow on? Are you a Philly? Could you be out of tune with the um like you be like, my hell nah, bro. Fuck it. Like you starting sick and guessing and shit.
Yo, intro, your intro is real quick. I see a lot of producers, they be goddamn having 45 second intro. When you play a beat to an artist, how long, <laughs> yeah, no. how long that intro should be? Man, bad. I, I don't count, man. Like, my shit was 45 seconds long as fuck. Like, when I used to do this shit. But nah, man, I got used to with bad, man. He'll go straight in, like, go. Like, man, they just be like five, five to the five bar right there. Or I go to the nine bar. Depending on how I feel, depending on what type of beat it is. Shit, that's that one. We go ahead and cook up one more. But don't make you say you want some pain, bro. Got you. That. I be fuck with the pain shit, though. Don't count. You be fucking with Rod Wave and shit? Yeah, yeah. I fuck, I fuck with TNT. <laughs> fuck with TNT, bro. It ties money in them, bro. It's like family. When I first came in the game, bro, the only nigga that really just hit me up was TNT, ties money, D Hill, Tay Keith. Hey, take he me, take he from the same city, man. They got Keyscape pulled up. Keyscape, the best one. Okay, that's why I made on um, Back in Blood then. How you got the Back in Blood placement? How that came about? How you linked with Pooh Shice? We were working on bad. Um, he was feeling that day. And like, shit. I said, I'm going to just go over there and Pooh, check Pooh out. You know what I'm saying? He just had got signed. So, man, he was looking for some beats and shit. Man, he was working on some shit, man. I was just making some beats in my head from I cooked up, man. Like, once again, I didn't have no piano, so I'm just keep patting shit in. And shit came out, I'm like, okay. I feel like, man, this, this is they gonna be simple as fuck, bro. Like, kept that bit simple as hell. Like, this the most simplest beat that I ever heard in my life, bro. The biggest song right now. Go ahead and give us, like, three things, like, a producer should do once they get, once they get that big, I'm talking about some billboard, number one shit. What should they do with the bag, man? Hey, bro, we say it, money, man. Like right now, I'm getting a, I'm getting a house built right now, man. But I say it, kid. And I, I just, I just invest in like what I've been wanting and what I've been dreaming of to do. Like I just investing in my own dog kindle, man. Like you know what I'm saying? Niggas will get a niggas like five racks to go blow, go blow that. Like I said, man, I was gonna do that, but I'm like, man, fuck that, man. Let me go invest in the dog business, man. Make sure my niggas ain't gotta work in the workhouse no more, man. That's how I was thinking. And I had made my own record label, man. It's called Hit Business. And all those invest that money, man. Like, but I knew this time, I knew what I'm investing. Like, I need to invest my money into something so my money keep growing and keep expanding. I just, man, putting my money in, like, I, okay, I'm like, just depending on one income. No, I ain't with that. So I just investing in a you know, whole bunch of shit. But I ain't gonna lie though, it treat yourself though. No cap, treat yourself. Like, like go spend a couple bag on some shoes, man. Like, no cap, bro. I got like my like, hundred pair of shoes, bro. It's not even out yet, bro. I ain't even lie. So how, how important is like dressing? Cause I see some producers that be like, man, I walk in there with some flip flops. And I see other producers that be like, man, I, you gotta me. present yourself. I ain't gonna lie, it's me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, bro. I ain't gonna I'm walking in motherfucking man, jogging pants on. I been, I just been stepping out, though. I'm not been stepping out, man. Hey, all you need the Rolex, man. Let's be for the sun right now. I don't, hey. <laughs> Oh, hold on, I'm gonna let you get ready. Let you put it out. Um, yeah, you gotta flash that bit one time. <laughs> yeah, you got to, no cap. <laughs> <laughs> You about to have me go in my closet, put my bottom boy survival hoodie on, bro. <laughs> <laughs>
I often thought a little midi from the new little kit I just dropped. <laughs>